what I've got here is the new 2025 Kados Mine Mini Modular Workstation. And basically what we've got here is a modular mini PC with a powerful Intel Core Ultra 258V CPU. That's the main upgrade for the 2025 model. And you may have noticed that I mentioned that this is a modular mini PC. This is a port in the bottom known as the Mine Link. And what I've got here is the Mine Graphics dock. It's actually a full-fledged RTX 4060 Ti with 16 gigabytes of VRAM. And this isn't connected over Thunderbolt 4. It's not connected over Oculink. Essentially, this GPU is now connected to this mini PC using a PCIe X8 slot. Up to 256 giga transfers per second, which means we can get the maximum performance out of this RTX 4060 Ti. And by the way, this is not a laptop GPU. It's actually the desktop variant of the RTX 4060 Ti. In this video, I've got a lot to cover. I wanna show you how this thing performs, but before we jump into it, I do wanna mention that this video is sponsored by URCD Keys. I've been using this site for quite some time now. They offer Steam Keys, Uplay, Ubisoft, but the main thing I pick up over here are Windows 11 Pro Keys. And right now, if you use code ETA, you can get 25% off. So at checkout, we'll just enter the code ETA. That's gonna bring the price down to 2288. They're gonna email you that key and then you can activate Windows. Speaking of that, let's head over to a new PC that I recently built. As you can see, we're running Windows 11. And from settings, we're gonna to go to activation settings. It's gonna tell us that we're not active. We don't have a key installed. So we're just gonna paste it right in here. Choose next. It's gonna activate Windows for us and we're ready to go. If you're in need of cheap Windows keys, I'll leave a link in the description. And remember, you can use code ETA for 25% off. So as you can see, the Kados Mind is a very small form factor mini PC, and I like using it just like it is with that Core Ultra 258V, but when I need a little more out of it, I've got the Mind Graphics dock, but one thing to keep in mind is it does have two Thunderbolt 4 ports that run at a 40 gig protocol, so if you wanted to use a less expensive eGPU, you definitely could. But in this video, we're going to be testing it out with the Mind Graphics, and up front here, we've got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, full-size SD card slot, and a Thunderbolt port. In fact, you can use this as an eGPU for other devices if you want to connect it over Thunderbolt. Round back, we've got our power input, gigabit Ethernet, two full-size HDMI ports. We've also got a display port, three USB 3.0 ports, and our locking button. So this does lock in once everything powers up. Plus, we've got the I.O. on the mind itself, two USB 4 ports, full-size HDMI, and two USB 3.2 ports. Now, we looked at the I.O. on the rear, but we've got something special here with the Mind. The whole ecosystem is pretty interesting because right under this rubber plug here, we've got the Mind Link. And basically, what this is going to allow us to do is connect different modules that Kados offers over on their website. And when it comes to the Mind Link max speed, 256 giga transfers per second, as opposed to USB 4 or Thunderbolt 4's 32 giga transfers per second. It's basically a PCIe X8 5.0 slot. All right, so here it is. Give you a quick rundown. As you can see, we've got the Intel Core Ultra 7 258V. We've also got 32 gigs of RAM here, running at 8,533 megahertz. And I'll tell you, while I'm gaming, I actually disable the ARC 140i GPU. I'm pretty sure it doesn't make much of a difference, but anytime I've got an iGPU and a dedicated GPU, I usually disable the integrated. That way it doesn't need to send any unnecessary power over there, bringing the clocks on the CPU down. And of course, we've got that NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4060 Ti. This is not a laptop variant, it's actually a desktop variant with 16 gigabytes of VRAM. With the Core Ultra 258V, show you what we've got here. And this is about the max TDP. I'll zoom in just a bit. 35, 36, I have seen it boost up to 40 for a split second and then come on back down. But yeah, I mean, we're at about 35 watts here with this chip. And to give you an idea about the 4060 Ti, we'll go ahead and run Furmark. So yeah, I think this will do around 180 if I do a little bit of overclocking because we actually can through, you know, a third-party application like uh, Afterburner. But I've been leaving it at the stock clocks right there, 160, 165 in some cases. Okay, so with that out of the way, last thing I want to show you here is the mind application from Kados. This actually makes it really easy to go ahead and update the firmware on everything. We've got the Mind Maker Kit with the 258V. Device mode when plugged, I like it to go into hibernation mode, smart charging. We can update the drivers, and I don't think we have any new updates, nope. 
uh, device upgrade. If you want to check for firmware updates, BIOS updates, it's right here and you can do so through the Mind app. But you might notice right at the bottom, we've also got access to the Mind graphics. So any of the modular CADOS products that work with this should show up in the Mind app. Device info, firmware version, details, and we can change that light up front. But again, just makes it really easy to go ahead and update everything. Now I wanted to show off some benchmarks and then we're gonna jump right into some gaming. And the first one we have here is Geekbench 6 with this Core Ultra 7 258V, single core 2,582, multi 10,533. Looking good here, given that our maximum TDP is around 36 watts. I also ran a couple GPU benchmarks and just to give you an idea here, with OpenCL using Geekbench, this RTX 4060 Ti, 121,000. And if you take a look at their browser, you can see that the RTX 4060 laptop variant is coming in a little over 100,000. So we do have the desktop unit here. 3D Mark Firestrike, total score 23,190. And finally, we've got Time Spy with a really impressive 12,312. Just taking a look at these synthetic benchmarks, it's not looking bad, but now I want to jump into some real world gaming. And the first one we have here is Cyberpunk 2077, and I am at 1440p right now. I'll go into the settings and show you. We're actually at 1440p high settings with some DLSS. So we'll go to high, uh, make sure we're using DLSS. We'll set this to balanced, make sure it's applied, and now we'll go up to video. I'll just show you, yeah, 1440p on this RTX 4060 Ti. Not doing a bad job. I mean, it's actually performing way better than I thought it would. And yeah, I mean, when it comes to the RTX 4060 Ti, there are some people out there that really only consider it a 1080p Ultra card. And yeah, for 1080p Ultra, I mean, basically you can max out anything with this setup here. But I personally consider this a 1440p high card because going up to that higher resolution really does make a big difference in visual quality as long as you've got a decent display to run your games on. With a low-end display going from 1080 to 1440 to the eye might not make a huge difference. But personally, if my system has enough power, I'd rather run high 1440 or even medium 1440 rather than 1080 Ultra. But that's just me, and I mean, everybody's got their own preference. So with the way it's set up right now, we're seeing an average of around 75 FPS, but there's a lot more that we can get out of it because we also have frame gen here that we can use. And I'm a huge fan of it. I know some people out there don't like it, but going from 75 up to an average of 115 does make a difference. And it's something I definitely like to use, especially on the RTX 4060 or as we have here, the 4060 Ti, just to get a little more out of it. Next up, we've got Elden Ring 1440 high settings. And at Ultra, this will run, but we do have more dips and I really think it comes down to the CPU performance here. At least on paper, this should have a boost clock up to 4.8 gigahertz, but through all of my testing with the Core Ultra 258V and laptops and handhelds, I've never seen it go up that high. And I've always really thought it was because, you know, we had to utilize that iGPU kind of splitting up that power. But even with it disabled in every system that I've tested, I've never seen it go up past 4.2. Hogwarts Legacy, no frame gen. We're at high settings, 1440p, DLSS set to balanced. Not horrible, but I was kind of expecting a little more out of it. I do test this game from time to time and, you know, inside of the city or the town here, it does kind of take a hit on that GPU. And again, if you take a look at Afterburner, we're at about 90 to 95% utilization on the CPU. So it's going to come down to that 258V. We've only got eight cores and eight threads with this setup. Spider-Man Miles Morales and Spider-Man Remastered do work really well on this system. I've got DLSS set to quality. And to tell you the truth, I mean, to get over 60, we don't even need to enable any DLSS. But with it like this, I mean, we're right there on the edge of running this kind of at 120 consistently. And at the time of making this video, I'm kind of getting ramped up for Spider-Man 2 to launch on PC. I've played it on PS5. I love the game. Uh, I love all of the games. But having it come over to PC like Miles Morales and Remastered, it's going to be absolutely amazing. And the final game we have here is Black Myth Wukong. 
So this is one of those games, uh, even on the RTX 4060, if we want to run it at those higher resolutions and higher settings, we do need some frame gen. So I'm using Nvidia's frame gen from within the game. We're at 1440 high, seeing an average of around 77 FPS. Feels good like this. Uh, I might drop a few of the settings down when I play through this on the system, you know, by myself. Just uh, take some down to high, medium to alleviate any major dips. But so far, it's been working really well. Overall, the new Kadas mine has been a great little setup all by itself, but again, with that mine graphics attached, I mean, it opens up a whole new world. And obviously, in this video, we covered a lot of gaming, but if you're looking to do large language models on something like this, I think uh, with the 16 gigs of RAM on that RTX 4060 Ti as opposed to 8, it's really going to help out. And it's going to be miles faster than any NPU built into a CPU at the time of making this video. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I've been messing around with this for the last few days and I figured I'd go ahead and show it off. If you're interested in learning a little more, I will leave links in the description. If there's anything else you want to see running on this setup, be it just on the mind with no GPU or with GPU attached, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.